going to do number 28. Uh, we're going to solve this rational x equation. And so we have 3x over x plus 1 minus 5 over 2x equals 3 over 2x. Now, if you recall, we need to look at the lowest common denominator, the LCD. So we have x plus 1, and we also have 2x. So that is my LCD. So what we want to do, first of all, when we're solving, is we want to clear the fraction. So in order to clear the fraction, we're going to multiply each and every value by x plus 1 times 2x. Okay, so one way to do it is to, you know, write it like that. Or, you know, if you want, you can write it to every single value. Whatever helps you out in order to multiply correctly. Okay, so again, we want it, when we're solving, we want to clear the fraction. So notice when we're multiplying x plus 1, 2x to the first term, the x plus 1 cancels. So now we're left with 2x times 3x minus the 2x cancels. 5 times x plus 1 equals 3 times x plus 1. So then we distribute and solve for x. So we get 6x squared minus 5x minus 5 equals 3x plus 3. Then we move everything to one side, set it equal to 0. So we get 6x squared minus 8x minus 8 equals 0. So let's go ahead and factor out a 2. Always look at the GCF to make this a little nicer for yourself. So you're left with 3x squared minus 4x minus 4 equals 0. Now this is factorable. So what multiplies to negative 12 that adds to negative 4? So when you factor it, it becomes 2 times 3x plus 2 times x minus 2. And then if you multiply that through, it would be correct. Then you do the zero product property for each, right? So x equals negative 2 thirds and x equals 2. So the one thing you need to remember is look at the domain. Think about what the domain is of this equation. So you have to take a look. What are your restrictions? So we're looking at the denominator. What can you not have? We know that x cannot equal negative 1, right, because that makes it 0 here, and x can also not equal 0, so I put that here. So these don't hit the restrictions, um, number 1, so that works. Um, you can always plug it in, too, to see if you get the right answer as well, but for now, uh, just remember to check your restrictions, and um, if one hits one of the restrictions, like, for example, if we had a 0, then we'd have to cancel that out as one of our solutions. So this last example, we're going to graph a rational function. So we need to identify the vertical and horizontal asymptotes, domain and range, then graph including horizontal and vertical asymptotes as dashed lines. So if you remember, the parent function of this is 1 over x. So we know, number one, that it's vertically stretched by 2, uh, right 1, and up 5. So right 1, that means that well, we know that x can never equal positive 1, right? That would be um, undefined, so that is not allowed. So that is our vertical asymptote. Then we have our y value at 5. It can never equal 5. So that is our horizontal asymptote. The next thing you need to take a look at is the 2 over x, this here. We already shifted it over 1 and 5, so we're just going to use the 2 over x. Remember that it's a vertical shift, um, and... Uh, it is a vertical stretch by 2. We can also plug in values to 2 over x to make it faster. So we're doing it from the new origin. If you plugged in 1, 2 over 1, that would be 2. So that would be here. If you plugged in a positive 2, then that would be here. Then the other thing you can do is plug in a half. If you plugged in a half, that would be 4. If you plugged in 4, that would also be a half. So that is one branch. Then if you plugged in a negative 1, you would get negative 2. Plug in a negative 2, negative 1, and so forth. So the branches do not hit those asymptotes, and here is your graph. So our domain is all real numbers except when x equals 1, right? We cannot have except x cannot equal 1. I guess you can put x cannot equal 1. And then the range is all real numbers except, except y cannot equal 5. Okay, so I hope this helps out. Thanks for watching.